Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to show you how to do bulk processing in Topaz Labs Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, and Sharpen AI. Typically, when you're going to do bulk processing using any of those three Topaz Labs applications, you're going to want to do that processing on images that are similar to one another because you're going to be applying the same exact settings to each of the images. So, for this demonstration, I have this set of 10 images. It's just a seagull flying through the air. Obviously, they were taken one after another. They're all visually similar to one another, and they all have the same settings. So this is a good group of images to do bulk processing on. Now, I'm going to do the demonstration using Denoise AI, but the bulk processing process is the same for, Denoise, or for Gigapixel AI and Sharpen AI as well. So there's nothing different as far as the bulk processing is concerned. Also, as you can see, I'm in Lightroom, so I'm going to be using uh, Denoise AI as a plugin in Lightroom. You can do this as a standalone app as well. So if you have 10 RAW files on your hard drive or more or less, and you want to bulk process those, you could do that as well, uh, doing the exact same things I'm going to be doing here after I get the images into the application. Now. Let's, without further ado, let's get these going. Now, as far as what I did in Lightroom, I did do some processing in Lightroom, uh, just basic processing. And um, if you've watched any of my videos where I demonstrate how to use Denoise, I recommend that you don't add any texture clarity or dehaze at this point because that tends to enhance the noise. And Denoise AI is more effective working on images that don't have any extra texture clarity or dehaze added to them. Um, also, um, as far as the detail is concerned, I typically don't add any sharpening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all, make sure auto sync is on, and I'm going to take sharpening all the way down. So sharpening is now reduced on all 10 images. I don't add any luminance noise reduction in Lightroom, and I do like to use color noise reduction. I usually leave it at the default value of 25. There is color noise reduction in Denoise AI as well, but I find that the Lightroom noise reduction works great, so I just use that. So I have them processed the way I want them processed to this point in Lightroom. Now at this point I want to get rid of the noise. I have them all selected in the film strip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to right click right on the image that is being shown, go down to edit in, and then over and down to Topaz Denoise AI. When you do that, you'll get this dialog box. And because we're using Denoise AI as a Lightroom plugin, and this is the same for Gigapixel and Sharpen AI as well, uh, we'll just have one option, edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Uh, we're going to do a TIFF Pro Photo RGB, 16 bits per component, resolution 360. It's really not that important. People really get all hung up on this number. I put 360 in there because um, I have a Epson printer and re Epson recommends that you try to use a resolution of 360 throughout your workflow. It really doesn't matter though, trust me. So I have 360 there, compression none, and we're going to click edit. Now what's happening, if you look in the top left hand corner, you'll see that there's a progress bar. Lightroom is creating 10 TIFF files with those specs and it will open those 10 TIFF files up into um, Denoise AI. Again, if we were doing this for Sharpen AI or Gigapixel AI, the same exact thing would be happening right now. So what I'll do, I'm not going to let you sit here and watch it, create these 10 TIFF files. I'll pause the video and when these are opened in Denoise AI, I'll resume the video. Okay, it has all 10 images opened up into Denoise AI. So I'm going to go over to the navigator window and I'm going to move the a little square or little rectangle box over the uh, actual seagull in the image. Now what we're viewing is one of the 10 images 
and I have it in comparison view. If you look at the top, you see the different views. Single view, split view, side-by-side -side view, and comparison view. I prefer comparison view because I could see all four AI models at the same time and compare them to one another. In the top left-hand corner, we have the standard AI model. Next to that, we have the clear AI model. And you see when I click on it, it changes it over on the right hand side to the clear AI model and we could see the settings for that model. Lower left hand corner is the low light model. You could see that one's not auto. I had the other two on auto so I'll put that on auto. I like to compare apples to apples as much as possible so I'll keep that on auto. We'll go to severe noise and severe noise is on auto and just looking at them um, now this was shot, uh, the sequence of images was shot with an ISO of 500. So there wasn't a lot of noise uh, to begin with, but I still like to use Denoise AI in that situation because it does a better job than Lightroom's noise reduction. Now I think the standard model set to auto um, is the best, just eyeballing it here. In the video, I would imagine you're probably hard pressed to see a difference, but Seeing as my nose is like 12 inches away from my monitor, I could see that the standard model is the best. Now the thing is, if I, at this point, just click apply, it's going to apply it to this one image. And then it's going to bring the next image up for me to work on. So you could work on your 10 images individually, but that kind of defeats the purpose of doing them in bulk. So to do them in bulk, what you need to do is go over here and select all. Now when you do that, this setting, standard, because that's the active one, has the blue box in the lower left hand corner, will be applied to all 10 images with these settings over here. And that's how you do it in bulk. It's as simple as that. And it's laid out the same exact way in Sharpen AI and Gigapixel AI as well. When you open up more than one image in those applications, just remember to click this box, select all. So they're all selected. And you can see all 10 images are here at the very bottom. So they're all selected. And I've decided I want this. If I wanted to tweak it, I could. And if I tweak uh, it now, um, it will be applied to all 10 images, whatever adjustments I do. If I decide to change and I think clear is better, clear will be applied to all 10 images um, and so on. So I'm going to go with standard. And we'll click apply. It's really that easy. Now you'll see it's adding those settings or doing that processing to each of those 10 images right here. And of course it's going to take a little while. So I'll pause the video and when we're back in Lightroom, I'll resume. Okay, we're back in Lightroom. And as you could see, when it returned to Lightroom, all the 10 TIFF files, these are the images that were processed in Denoise AI, are selected in the film strip. So they're the active images. So I'm going to give them all a pick flag. So I'll just hit the P key on my keyboard to give them a pick flag. And they'll all get the pick flag because I have auto sync turned on over here. If that was turned off, then only the hot image, the one image being displayed up here would get the pick flag. Um, now with that, I could just filter by the flag. So I could do that. Now these are the 10 uh, TIFF files here. So you can see that now we remove noise from those 10 images. So it's as simple as that. It really isn't that difficult. Uh, you just um, really need images that are similar to one another because, again, you're going to be applying the same exact settings to each of those images, no matter if you're using Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, or Gigapixel AI. So just keep that in mind. Now, for those of you may be wondering, uh, this short sequence of images was taken with uh, the new Nikon Z9. Um, I was just practicing and testing the 3D tracking of it and just was um, taking photos of seagulls flying through the air because that was what was available. And uh, you can see the settings up here. I was using a Nikon 24-200 f4-6.3 lens. That's it. Hopefully this helps you a uh, bulk process using any of those Topaz Labs products. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.